We start tonight with new information. It's been three years since Joseph D'Angelo, the man responsible for dozens of rapes and murders up and down the state, was sent to prison. D'Angelo became known by several monikers that reflect the ge geographical scope of his crimes. Names like Vesalia Ransacker, East Area Rapist, and Original Night Stalker, murdering, raping, and robbing his victims. Keep in mind, he is now behind bars, and To The Point host Alex Bell has new information tonight. A haunting voice. It sticks with you. Joseph James D'Angelo's chilling threats were just one layer of torture. He began terrorizing Sacramento County in 1976, laying in wait while his victims slept. He was able to escape very quickly from his crime scenes, and he would just disappear in the night. Right? Almost as if he vanished like a ghost, like a boogeyman. Ambushing girls as young as 13 years old, blinding them with light, binding their hands, then raping them. Sacramento was a quiet, sleepy town. People would leave their doors unlocked, their windows open. But when he started committing his crimes, everybody started locking their doors. People couldn't buy enough locks, guns. It gripped the community to fear. In the cover of darkness, he preyed on people in Carmichael, Citrus Heights, and Rancho Cordova, often targeting couples. While raping the women, he would psychologically torture their husbands, tying them up and placing dishes on their back, threatening them not to move. He was very savvy. When he committed his crimes initially, um, his victims, his sexual assault victims all lived. By the time he was committing his murders in Southern California, he was killing everyone, not leaving behind any victims. D'Angelo left a trail of fear all throughout California. He committed 13 known murders, over 50 rapes and 120 burglaries up and down the state of California in 11 different counties. Sacramento County District Attorney Tian Ho helped put D'Angelo in prison. Investigators with the Sacramento County Sheriff's Office and the District Attorney's Office connected him to the crimes using DNA. The arrest came on April 24, 2018. D'Angelo, a retired mechanic, was home in Citrus Heights when investigators arrived at his door. He was living in the shadows for decades in Sacramento County. District Attorney Ho remembers the night when detectives first interviewed D'Angelo. When he was first interviewed and put in an interview room, if you go back and you look at the booking photo, there's red at the top of his head. He actually ran his head into the wall. Um, and so we were worried that he was going to hurt himself. That's when the Sacramento County Sheriff's Office placed D'Angelo inside a cell with cameras. Ho was tasked with watching the videos and noticed something unusual. There's a, a video of him where he's walking um, into a cell with a cane in one hand and, he, and he's hobbling and he's moving very slowly as he walks into his cell. And then the moment the door closes, he puts the cane down and he starts just walking just fine. So you felt like you were witnessing firsthand another mask that he was just wearing? Absolutely. He was always trying to manipulate us, the public, his family, everybody. When the prosecution began laying out their case, collecting evidence from 11 different counties, Ho tracked every piece of evidence. I was tasked with coordinating um, the discovery from all the different counties, making sure that we had them, that they were documented, that they were cataloged, that they were organized, and then sending them over to the defense. Former Sacramento County District Attorney Anne Marie Schubert alleged special circumstances, making D'Angelo eligible for the death penalty. But the prosecution ended up making a deal, life in prison. I disagreed with that decision originally because- Why did you disagree? Because if anybody deserved the death penalty, it was him. 13 murders, 50 rapes, 120 burglaries. If anybody deserved it, it was him. But one of D'Angelo's victims ultimately changed his mind. Phyllis was the very first known um, sexual assault victim in Sacramento. I would see Phyllis come to court every single time. And Phyllis would sit right there in the front row. And I always come up, I said, Phyllis, how you doing today? We would chat, we would talk, I would tell her what was gonna happen that day. In June of 2020, the Sacramento State Ballroom became the courtroom, a building big enough for all of his victims to watch the man who had haunted their lives for decades plead guilty to 13 murders, 13 counts of kidnapping. Phyllis wasn't there. She was in the hospital fighting cancer. But on sentencing day, she made it to the hearing. It's a moment that Ho keeps close. I look across and who do I see? Phyllis. 
And Phyllis had this beautiful smile on her face. For the first time in 40 years, Phyllis was able to get a sense of closure and justice. About three months after that, she died from cancer. If we would have proceeded on this case, seeking the death penalty, Phyllis and all those other victims would not have obtained justice. When he was sentenced, mm -hmm. what was that feeling like for you? Relief. There's never joy. There's only relief. Relief that he was brought to justice. People ask me from time to time, why do you think he stopped? And my response to that is, what makes you think he did stop? D'Angelo is now serving 26 life sentences without the possibility of parole at an undisclosed prison in California. He is in a secure facility, in a secure unit. I get updates on him regularly. Has anything happened? Not yet. How's his health? His health so far is fine. Can you share what his typical day looks like? You know, in terms of his typical day, uh, you know, anything else in prison, he wakes up, he does have a job in prison. What does he do? Uh, well, I think I'm gonna not talk about what he does, but okay. he does have a job in prison. He um, is in a cell. He obviously is in a protected unit because of his status. Three years after the sentencing, Tian Ho says that he still thinks about the case, about the victims, and knows Joseph D'Angelo is where he belongs. I mean, the human being is capable of such great beauty but the human animal is capable of such great depravity. And you get to see that and see a glimpse of it. And does it have an effect? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, from time to time, I think about the case, but what I do now in order to deal with all that is I think about the people and not the crime. And it gives me hope when I think about bringing justice for those people. So that's what I hang on to.